Our next video here, we're looking at quadratic inequalities, and we'll discuss some of the breakdowns of how people solve these and how we get the wrong answers. We're going to look at this again. When you think inequalities, you want a picture, just like we did with those linear functions and which function was greater than the other function, and we made a quick graph. We're going to use that same philosophy. We're going to be doing a lot of graphing in this course and using those graphs to justify our answers. So when you have a quadratic inequality greater than zero or one that's less than zero, and like I said, we're going to use prior knowledge of our graphing. We know that the, the y-intercept is always at zero C. We know that A tells us if the parabola opens up or down. And this should give us a good idea of what the parabola is going to do to help and help us solve our inequality. Think about setting your equation equal to y. So we'll say y equals ax squared plus bx plus c greater than zero. So this ax squared plus bx plus c is representing your y's. So this tells us that we want y coordinates that must be greater than zero or positive y's. So we want the part of the graph that is above the x-axis. And if the inequality was less than, then everything gets switched around. Then we want the y coordinates that would be below the x-axis because we're looking for negative y's. So we're going to use pictures here to help us solve our inequalities. So let's say I had the inequality x squared minus 4x minus 12 greater than or equal to 0 and graph the solution set. So what I would look at this right away and say, well, I have a positive x squared. So a is positive, so I know the parabola opens up. And the minus 12 at the end is my y-intercept at 0, negative 12. So I'm going to draw a quick parabola. There it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be drawn to scale. I just need to put in those two facts. It crosses at 0, negative 12. Negative 12 has to be somewhere below the x-axis. And it opens up, so I have a u-shaped curve going up. So now remember what we said. We want this x squared minus 4x minus 12. We want this to be greater than or equal to 0. These are your y-coordinates. We want positive y-coordinates. So on my graph here, because it's greater than or equal to, at this x-intercept and this x-intercept, I'm going to put closed dots. And I want to shade up my graph so I have positive y's being graphed. Well, we need to find what x-coordinates will give us those positive y's. All right, so on my graph, I need all the x-coordinates that are to the left of this x-intercept and all the x-coordinates to the right of that x-intercept. So here's my solution set as a graph. So in interval notation, I now know that I'm going from negative infinity to this x-intercept with a bracket, union, bracket, x-intercept, comma, positive infinity. This is what my answer has to look like. So now that I know what my answer looks like, what I really need to find are these x-intercepts. Well, if I'm looking for x-intercepts, it's no longer an inequality. It's an equation. You just set it equal to 0, you factor, and you solve. So what two factors of 12 will subtract to be negative 4? That's negative 6 and 2. So x minus 6, x plus 2, set them equal to 0, solve for x, x equals 6, x equals negative 2. So the smallest x-intercept, the one that's negative, that's negative 2, the smallest number goes to the left, and the largest goes to the right. So we plug in our numbers, and we have our solution set. Now, I want to, at this point, discuss where people make mistakes. Is they go from here right to factoring. They factor this. They set x minus 6 greater than or equal to 0, x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. And if you solve that, one of the inequalities is going to be wrong. x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Add over the 6. I want everything that's x is greater than or equal to 6. Yes, that's this part. 
but if I take the x plus 2 and set it greater than or equal to 0, x would be greater than or equal to negative 2, and we'd want to be shading to the right. But we actually want it shaded to the left. So when you do the zero product rule, all right, zero product rule only works if this is an equal to zero. It does not work with greater than symbols. So never do that zero product rule solving technique with inequalities. Make a picture, get an idea of where you want to shade, and then turn it into an equation and solve it. All right, next example here, we don't have our inequality, if you will, equal to zero on the right side. I said equal, I know it's an inequality. So I'm gonna get zero over here on the right. So I'm gonna subtract over the x, subtract over the 10. So this is now telling me I want y coordinates that are less than zero, I want negative y's. So again, positive two, parabola opens up on your positive x squared term, negative 10 at the end, that's my y-intercept. So I'm going to go make a graph. Okay, boom, just like the last one. Here's 0, negative 10. Doesn't have to be drawn at the scale. Now I want it, like I said, negative y's. So now the part of the graph that I want is shaded below the x-axis. And notice here I have open circles at my x-intercepts because we do not have the equal to line. So once we understand this is the part of the graph I want, what x's are going to give me those y's? Well, that will be all the x's between these two x-intercepts. That's my solution set. So I can write my interval notation. I can't touch it, so no equal to line, left parentheses, smallest x-intercept will go to the left, comma, largest x-intercept on the right, parentheses. I know what my answer looks like. Now I can turn this into an equation and solve it for x. So 2x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. We're going to factor this. All right, and this is what I call my factor by grouping shortcut. We have 2x squared. You know the factors are 2 and 1. I just don't know which binomial is going to get the 2, so I put the 2 in both of those. And now I need to find my factors. All right, and those factors are going to be 2 times 10. That's going to be negative 20. What two numbers multiply to be negative 20 and subtract to be a 1? All right, and that's 5 and 4. So since my x is a minus, the bigger factor has to carry the minus sign in the binomial. The smaller one will carry the positive because we need a term in the middle that's minus. Now, granite, 2x plus 4 is not my true binomial here because 5 times 4 is 10. But because it has a GCF of 2 in it, we factor or divide out the 2. Cancel that out, and it becomes x plus 2. So there's how it factors. So my answers here will be 2x minus 5 equals 0. Add over the 5, divide over the 2, 5 halves. Subtract over the 2, minus 2. So smallest to the left, largest to the right, and there you have your answer. And again, you could take your graphing calculator graph this in y1 and you can get your graph and you can see that there's where your positive y's you can find your x-intercepts and double check everything now here we have any an, excuse me there any and in inequality it's already set equal to zero again we don't have a number in front of x squared, so there's a positive 1, so we know it opens up. And we know this time we have 0, 1 for a y-intercept. So your positive y-intercepts, when it opens up, this opens the door for more possibilities. So here's my y-intercept at 0, 1. What I don't know is it opens up. 
do I have my graph with the right side of the parabola crossing the y-axis? Or is the left side of the parabola crossing the y-axis? Or even better yet, what if my parabola has the vertex near 0, 1? and it doesn't cross the x-axis. So we have three possibilities to look at. If I had a negative y-intercept, it'd be done, I know. Plot down here, have, I have two x-intercepts, we're ready to go. So the only way to know what kind of graph I'm going to have is to actually set this equal to zero and solve it for x. And if I get two negative x-intercepts, it's the blue graph. If I get two positive x-intercepts, it's the green graph. If I don't get any x-intercepts, it's the red graph. We know we want positive y's. So all three of these graphs have a chance. We just don't know which one it is. So again, we're going to solve for the x-intercepts by setting it equal to 0. Now, you could do the quadratic formula. But we would learned quad, uh, completing the square, so I'm going to use that technique, and you can use it for solving equations. And to do that is you want to get rid of the positive 1 because this doesn't factor. There are no two factors of 1 that add up to 1. So get rid of the 1. Subtract it to the other side. So on the left side, I'm going to have x squared plus x plus a blank. And on the other side of the equal sign will be a plus blank. Now, when we did completing the square before to convert into a vertex form, we did all the changes to one side. That's why we had a plus or minus. But now we're making changes to both sides of the equation. It's plus blank, plus blank on either side. Now, same rule applies. Take half of the b value, which is 1. So half of 1 is 1 half. I square that. That's 1 fourth. So these two terms being squared, remember, this turns into my binomial squared x plus a half, that binomial squared. Negative 1 plus 1 fourth is negative 3 fourths. However, how can you square a number and get it to equal a negative? That is not possible. So there's going to be no x-intercepts in this problem. So we are looking at the red graph. And so what x's generate the red graph to have all positive y coordinates, every single x coordinate. The entire graph has positive y's. So my x's are all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. So with that said, one of the things that we want to do when finding these patterns of inequalities is we always, always, always want to have a positive a here. If you do, then you know your parabola always opens up and your c will always be your y-intercept. And then you have one of those three cases that you encountered. If you have a greater than, whether it's greater than or equal to, or just greater than, you will always get what we call the tails of the parabola. That's the part that opens up or down. And you will have two intervals with the union symbol in between. If you have the less than symbol, less than or equal to or less than, you have one interval. This is you want all the x's between your x-intercepts. So they're either double brackets or double parentheses. Now, if you run into a quadratic inequality where the leading coefficient of a is negative, then what you can do is simply divide both sides by a negative 1. But remember, when you divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. So if this was a negative ax squared, I divide negative to everybody, and 0 divided by a negative 1 doesn't change the 0, but it will change the inequality symbol to a less than. And now we're down here. All right, and that wraps up our 4.5 video.